Do you ever feel scattered during your practice? Like you don't have the materials you need right there and it ends up taking time out of your practice? Today we're going to be talking about organizing your practice environment and what tools you need at your fingertips. Welcome to Adventures in Suzuki Parenting. Hi, I'm Jody St. Clair, and today we're going to be talking about building your toolbox for practice. If you have any particular uh, materials that you really love to use, every family ends up with a few unique things. Please share what you use in the comments below. I would love to hear what you have in your practice toolbox. Make sure you subscribe so that you get a video every week with practice tips. Also, if you would like a guide for building your toolbox of practice materials, make sure and check out the links below. There will be a downloadable guide where you can kind of build exactly what you need for the moment that you're in. No matter what age your child is, it's important to have a practice toolbox. When they are young, you are modeling how to keep that environment organized and use your space well. Um, when they get older, they are going to need their practice materials there and, and they're going to be more in charge of it. You're just going to kind of check in with them every once in a while to make sure that they are really have what they need there. What, what do I mean by practice toolbox? I'm simply talking about like a basket or a box where you keep the things that you are using in your practice. Um, here, let's go and I'll share with you what we have in our practice toolbox. We are now in our family room where we keep our instruments and where we do our practice. And I'm going to give you a little tour of our practice area and what we have in our practice toolbox. So. It's a very sunny day here in Oregon today, and we have our instruments all hanging up on this wall so that our kids can see them. And um, this really helps make a difference for them, uh, just like I want my kids to see the books that are available for them. I want to see them to see their instruments. This isn't an option for everybody um, and in every climate, but if it is an option for you, it's a great thing to consider. And over here, we have a little area where our practice sheets are hanging and we have a basket with tools. We have a bag with review songs. We have our books and our notebooks here ready to go. And we also have a music stand with our note reading. So now I'm going to show you just a little bit of what's in our toolbox. So I'm gonna get our toolbox out over here and we just have a little basket here. And um going to share a few things that we have in here. So um, first of all, we have some kind of utility things. We have some of our cleaning cloths and we have rosin. Let me get those out of the way, another rosin, so that we are ready to be playing. Oh, and another rosin. <laughs> all right so in here I also have a tuner although I think that this one needs new batteries but um, uh, I usually use the one that's on my phone if I'm practicing with kids but it's important to um, make sure you're comfortable with tuning your instrument because um, practicing with it out of tune isn't going to be very helpful we also have a pencil sharpener so we have just ready to whatever we need for, and several pencils. A lot of pencils, probably more pencils than we need. We've got several. Okay, so then we get into some of the fun stuff. 
Um, I have several practice buddies in here. I have another video that you can check out. Um, it'll be up here and it's got, um, it's all about using practice buddies. This is one of my favorites. It was a gift from a student of mine and it um, is small and it's soft and it's very cute. Um, but I also have some little finger puppets. There's a flying pig for when we accomplish the impossible. And there's a watchful owl for watching position points and whatnot. So you can get creative um, about what you're using for practice buddies. I also have a little bee finger puppet and I don't think this is in here for a purpose but maybe my kids used it with my husband, uh, a little gorilla. Uh, you could use any little kind of plastic animals as practice buddies as well. All right, then we also have in here um, various little, some things that can go onto the bow. Um, we use sometimes these as little reminders or watchful little guys. And um, one of my favorite tools is the dice. So I've got several dice in here. We have more than this too in another spot. Um, and we use those for all sorts of things. Um, I have another video I'll link up here. Um, the odd and even game I use the dice for and just for a number of repetitions. And the last thing that we really have in here is our links. I really enjoy these as well. Um, these are um, just kind of little plastic links and uh, every time my daughter has been really enjoying this every time um, she does a task she gets to put the links together so actually what I should do is go ahead and detach these so that they're ready to go and you could put them in a little drawstring bag or something that kind of adds a little bit of magic to them that you pull one out every time um, if you don't want sometimes you know the colors can become more of a conflict than um, what we really want. So you can find ways to kind of make it fun and interesting, or you can really use the colors. I feel like um, we maybe at some point assigned the different colors to different things too. Um, you know, like red is an old piece and, and uh, uh, blue was doing open string rhythms or something like that. So, um, you can you can kind of use that creatively however you want. Um, and then I also want to show you our review system. So we have in here its own system for review so that we make sure and really get through all our pieces every week. So in this kind of broken red cup, it's not perfect, but it works. So um, we have all these popsicle sticks and we've written on them the names of the pieces. So um, my son picks a certain number. Right now we're pretty much doing three, although we're kind of starting to get ready for a book recital. So we're going to be doing some more. And then once he's done with them, he puts them in the bag. So there's a small pile this week in the bottom of the bag here. And we're working from the cup to the bag. You could just use two cups, you could use two bags, you could use envelopes, whatever is going to work best for you. And um, it's really, really good to come up with a system for your review in some way. And I'm sure that you've had uh, recommendations from your teacher. So um, it, usually review systems need to be kind of mixed up every once in a while so that it feels a little fresh and new. So you do one thing for a little while and then figure out another slightly different system for another for another time. Okay, so I'll meet you back up at in my studio. Thanks for joining me on a little tour of our practice area. Having your toolbox ready can really make your practice flow in a much smoother way and um, can make a big difference in kind of the way you feel about your practice as well, not having to kind of stress about if you have the right things there or have to run off and get something and worried about your, your, your child getting distracted while you're gathering materials. You'll be able to get things out right away when your practice starts. You'll be able to assess where your child is 
and pull out the tool that you need to really make that practice effective if it's not quite going the way that you want it to. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit like and subscribe. It makes a big difference to me and helps me create more of these videos. Thank you for joining me in this musical parenting journey. Happy practicing.